Where exactly do dogs come from? This is a question that has baffled both scientists and non-scientists for generations. What we know and what is well established is that somewhere 15 to 14,000 years ago, dogs and became close to the human species, interacting with our ancestors, working with them and living in their societies. We know this from DNA analyses and archaeological evidence from all over the world. But where did this happen for the first time? And what kind of dogs were these? How close were they to wolves at the time genetically? What kind of humans did they befriend and in which location? All these questions are yet to be answered. There have been numerous studies in the past that have attempted to answer these questions and they've all come up with a whole range of answers. Dogs have just been that omnipresent throughout our existence on this planet. But most studies have pointed out towards three main locations where we suspect dogs evolved to integrate fully into human societies. Central Asia, West Asia, which is geopolitically called Near East, or Europe. Now, a new study that has analyzed the ancient genomes of 72 different wolves over the last 100,000 years has some definitive answers. In the new study, scientists analyzed these 72 ancient wolf genomes from Europe, Siberia and North America. They found that there were two different source populations of wolves that have contributed to the DNA of the modern dog. How, we still don't understand, but we know what two source populations. The scientists conclude that one of two things have happened. Either dogs were domesticated independently once each in Asia and Europe and then these two populations of dogs bred with each other integrating into each other's genomes or dogs were domesticated just once somewhere in Central or Western Asia. These dogs then bred with a group of wolves that belong to Western Asia or Europe and then integrated this additional wolf DNA into their own DNA. It is one of these two scenarios as concluded by this new study. What's interesting is that genetically scientists cannot tell the difference between these two scenarios. The only thing that could be well established is that there were two source populations of wolves and the dogs are overall more closely related to ancient wolves from Asia than from Europe. Ancient North American wolves are nowhere in the picture Although ancient wolves from Africa still seem to be more closely related to modern Southwest Eurasian wolves and African dogs, which could potentially indicate a whole independent domestication event or once again local dogs breeding with wolves. It is very hard to trace the ancestry of domestic dogs using just dog DNA and dog remains because we can very quickly see through history that dogs became rapidly widespread in all human societies. Instead, the authors say that the origin of dogs could be resolved if the genetic diversity of wolves across time and space was documented meticulously and characterized properly. And then this data is used to examine and determine which of these wolf populations and where and at what time is closest to the ancestors of modern dogs. So for this study, the researchers sequenced 66 new wolf genomes, ancient wolf genomes, and also integrated into their findings five other previously sequenced wolf genomes from various locations that grey wolves have historically known to inhabit. These are of course closest to the Arctic Circle. All modern grey wolves, these Eurasian wolves, are descended from the same region and they were quite widespread even 25,000 to 30,000 years ago during the late Pleistocene. These wolves never came close to extinction. The researchers were able to trace what is known as the gene flow of these wolves as well. By analyzing and dating genomic records, scientists can tell which animals came from which locations and migrated to which locations and then integrated into the genomes of animals originally found there. So the researchers found wolf ancestry in North America that is tied to Siberia. And when the Bering Land Bridge existed 30,000 years ago, 
wolves from Siberia came to Alaska, but seemingly wolves did not migrate in the other direction. There weren't wolves that went from Alaska to Siberia. Turns out ancient North American wolves were wiped out eventually with the modern American wolves today being basically a mixture of 10 to 20 percent coyotes and the rest ancient Siberian grey wolf. The authors then traced what happened to wolves 10,000 years ago when the Bering Land Bridge became submerged. They found that the European grey wolves spread eastward and contributed to the genome of modern wolves that are found today in Siberia and in China. After this event, there was an overall reduction in gene flow indicating that the wolves weren't migrating and genetically spreading around much, although they were still widespread despite some local pockets of populations dying out. This is what the study has shown and what the scientists have understood from wolf genomic information dating back to 100,000 years ago. There were some genetic changes that the researchers noticed, such as with a gene that is named IFT88, which in humans can actually lead to a cleft lip and is present in all land mammals. But all genetic changes seem to have targeted olfactory receptor genes or the ones that process smell. So the wolves likely adapted to becoming dogs towards changes in sense and ability to smell more than anything else. So wolves that likely adapted towards changes in sense and ability to smell eventually went on to evolve into dogs. The researchers discovered that dogs were genetically more similar to wolves that lived about 28,000 years ago and later, not earlier, not older. A divergence in wolf population occurred at this time which separated the modern dog ancestors and modern wolf ancestors. And modern dogs also seem to be much closer to Siberian wolves and not related to European wolves. There are absolutely no genetic western population affinities in dogs and while ancient Siberian wolves are genetically close to ancient dogs, they were not the immediate ancestor. The modern dog's ancestor wolf lived outside of Europe, Siberia and North America. So these dogs, these ancient progenitor dogs, seem to have evolved almost entirely within the modern day Asia region. The scientists then compared modern dogs to ancient wolves near West Asia as well as African dogs. They found that only present day wolves from Syria, Israel, Iran and India were even compatible with modern dog genomes. When they studied wolf genomes here, the researchers also discovered that this is where the ancestors of Asian wolves were as well. They then used the Syrian wolf as the primary wolf genome and compared it with mixtures from other wolves in the dog genome. They then found that these dog ancestors that came from the Syrian wolf had then integrated again with another wolf population. They also found a separate lineage with African wolves that gave rise to modern day African breeds like the Karelian dog and the Basenji. These findings provide a great insight into the evolution of dogs. We know that dogs have evolved with us before we became fully what we are today. There are theories that dogs shaped our evolution just as much as we shaped theirs. And we know that dogs are especially adapted to human communication, human societies and the human world. We've always wondered where the animal came from into our society geographically and now we are the closest we've ever been to understanding this. <laughs>